I hate winter. <laughs> Most of the winter at the end of 2023 was just soggy. And now we finally have some snow, but it's in the like negative degrees. That is unacceptable. Now I have all this extra time because I'm sure as hell not going outside. So I think this seasonal book recommendation list is even more crucial for winter if you're anything like me. If you don't know, I like to do themed book lists and I've been doing it for each season, which has been a lot of fun. If, if there's a reading season, it's winter. And winter is the season for forgetting that outside is a thing and just going into your comfort zone with a good escape. So I have a handful of books that I am personally recommending and then a handful that are on my TBR that I think would make great winter reads, but I haven't read them yet. So don't hold it against me. I'm just guessing here. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, we have Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. This is part of the Discworld series, but I had never read anything of his, much less the Discworld universe, and I was able to read it just fine. This is a story that takes place with the Hogfather Hog's father, who is like the Santa Claus equivalent in this world, disappearing. And uh, in order to save the day, death is going to be taking Hog's father's place and these bumbling characters, the wizards, and all sorts of other people are going to try to figure out what's happening and uh, where's the Hog's father and save the festive season. So you got a really goofy, quirky sense of humor, doesn't take itself too seriously. Just kind of a fun read. And that, but what, what better? What's something that just, you know, keeps your interest, keeps a smile on your face, and just reminds you not to take everything so seriously, even if the world is going to pieces and outside is gross. I know when I'm in a funky mood and, you know, seasonal depression hits, it's good to have something that helps lighten things up for you. Then we have Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater. Read this back in high school. It is so like seasonally related. It's of course a winter book. Of course it is. It's literally a young adult paranormal romance where the werewolves change, not based off of the moon, but based off of like the season and the dropping temperatures leading into winter. And so you have switching point of view between the girl and the guy, and the guy is the werewolf. It's beautiful prose, bit melancholy, which well, a teenage book isn't, really captures the season, both the beauty and the like chill and haunting nature of it. Yeah, it just, I think it's really compelling and it makes for a good book to pair with the season. I think that would intensify the experience if you will, you can relate to the characters a smidge better than when you're like in a bikini in summer. Next is a nonfiction read. It's called The Little Book of Hugo by Meek Weeking. Tell me how bad I pronounced that down below. Nice, cute little book, cute little illustrations. Gives you some Scandinavian secrets for not wanting to end it all in the middle of winter, remind you of ways to create ritual and tradition and warmth and good feeling in this dark time of year. So tips on candles and books and blankets and sauna and finding a way to be in community. And so I think it's got a lot of very practical tips as well as the fact that it's a really compact, cute little book. So when you're done reading, it kind of could be a decor piece. For your bookshelf or whatnot. So double purpose. Then doo -doo 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 -doo, we have A Kiss of Shadows, which is the first book in the Mary Gentry series by Laurel K. Hamilton. This is such a good guilty pleasure, spicy, fantastical romance series. I can't say enough good things about it. I mean, come on, on those long winter nights, having something a little mm, is 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 the way to go. So I'm very particular with my romance books and all of that. And what I love about this is that the sexy times are baked into the plot. Like it is actually relevant that she's like having sex with all these different people, which is the other thing I love. I don't like choosing. I don't, 
I don't like romance books that make you choose. I don't like books that make you wait. I want to go, this is, you know, this is an escapism. Like, I don't need realism. Let's have some good times and I want good times now and I want a lot of good times. She has the schmecks with everybody, which I love. It's like, you don't have to choose. You just get a smorgasbord of love interests and like sexual encounters. And it's just like, oh, so good. And then there's like a fantasy element. So you get these ridiculous scenes where it's like, you might've had good sex, but did you have sex so good that it like makes an apple tree like break out of the ground and blossom? I didn't think so. Did you have sex so powerful that it flooded St. Louis? Don't think so. <laughs> and that's the only thing I love is that I'm from St. Louis and Laurel K. Like, Hamilton will sprinkle in some St. Louis vibes uh, randomly. <laughs> yeah, so it, you have like these fae world with you know supernatural creatures and really cool world building that didn't need to be a thing when it's a romance book and it's a series so it's going to keep you occupied for a long minute okay so now we're to the tbr list section and i think i found some really good ones for winter i'm pretty proud of myself first Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I'm, look at that cover. Tell me that's not a winter book. Oh, such winter vibes. I don't know why, but like mystery whodunits seemed like really winter specific. And I think part of that is just because we have the time and energy to take in all those details and like kind of think and whatever, because we're forced to slow down. We're going to be indoors. We can have a longer reading session, if you will. And this particular mystery book has a wintry landscape and a long train journey and a detective who's on trying to unravel who is the murderer. So um, I think it just checks off all those buckets. It's just killing it. And <laughs> pun was not intended, but very exciting. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, what more is there to say? I haven't read this book, but I mean, come on. This seems dope, and it's a classic. It's Agatha Christie. She delivers. I think it's a good time. Even if it's a bad book, I think it's a good time. That's the thing with mysteries. Like, you can also do, like, a book club with it. I think a winter book club, where you just talk about books with other people, is also a great way to go. Then, we have The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is set in medieval Russia. Nothing's colder than a Russian winter. And it's about a girl, from what I understand, a young girl that can see and communicate with household spirits and supernatural creatures in her village and stuff. And so you have like this mix of like magic and folklore and also some like historical elements like the introduction of Christianity and how that interplay between tradition and uh modern -ness impacts things and of course you know the young girl has to protect her people and uh utilize her supernatural gifts to save the day i think that's a, just a fun like escape and mat you know with that um wintry backdrop matches the vibe of the season so i'm hoping this one's good um i love the cover yet again dope ass cover and it just seems like a cool vibe, so fingers crossed. Last, we have clearly a book that was made to be on this list, Winter by Ali Smith. I've heard good things about her work and her writing, and she has like a novel, novelette series for each season. And I mean, come on, hello, it's called Winter. Look at that cover. It had to be on the list. It's apparently like a, family dynamics, societal reflections kind of book, but set in the backdrop of winter and the festive season. So it very much tied in to the novel. It definitely plays an element, I would assume, since it's the title. And um, I just really hope that it lives up to what I've heard about it. And um, I had a thought and now it's gone. So probably wasn't important hopefully but yeah so there we go i mean we have four books that i can guarantee are gonna be a good time 
technically more than four if you count the fact that there's a series attached to multiple <laughs> ones that I recommended. Also, these three that are on the TBR. So I'd be happy to know if you've read any of the books on the TBR, if you would recommend them, if you thought they were good. What other books would you consider wintry book reads? And do you do seasonal reading? I know that was a lot of questions, but pick one, pick all. Tell me down below. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay warm. Bye.